what are the options when an individual or both partners have a uterus and ovaries? Oftentimes, this is either IUI or intrauterine inseminations for one or both partners, or IVF, in vitro fertilization. And that can be reciprocal IVF, which we'll talk a little bit about. Now for both of these processes, we need a sperm source. So that can mean a donor sperm that's either directed or known. Maybe that's someone's family member, a friend that's known to one or both partners, or what was previously called anonymous or non-identified sperm source. So that can be from a sperm bank. Um, so a lot can go into making that decision of what's right for you and how do I go about choosing a donor sperm. Now, when using a non-identified sperm and using search tools that a lot of banks use, um, patients maybe prioritize different factors about the sperm when choosing a donor. Now, some people would like to share phenotypic similarities, either with the donor themselves or maybe their partner with the donor. Um, maybe you wanna feel a similar background culturally, maybe geographically, um, share similar interests, educational background, all of that's found in a non-identified donor sperm profile. And then you wanna pay attention to some of the logistics that are important when we're talking about fertility cycles and successes. So you wanna purchase a donor sperm that's appropriate for what cycle you're doing. That might be designated IUI sperm versus IVF or ART sperm. And that just comes down to the volume or the amount of sperm in each file. Um, but that can have an impact on cost and you wanna make sure you're just purchasing the right thing for what you're gonna be doing. So sometimes I tell patients, maybe don't purchase your sperm before you meet with your reproductive specialist. So what to expect if we're using donor sperm for an IUI? So in discussion, if, it de if you determine that you wanna proceed with intrauterine inseminations, you or your partner could consider this. Um, IUIs are procedures that involve a speculum exam. Sometimes I say it's kind of similar to a pap smear where the donor sperm is drawn up into a thin plastic catheter that's threaded through the cervix and the sperm's deposited into the uterus around the time of ovulation. So given all that information, oftentimes it's important for us to discuss the utility of finding information about patient or partner things like ovarian reserve, that what's information about their egg supply, their ovulatory status, um, and also potentially uh, anatomic information. So information about the uterine cavity or the fallopian tube, since with IUIs, we're having the sperm and eggs meet inside the body. So again, one or both partners can undergo intrauterine inseminations depending on their comfort with carrying a pregnancy. So that's IUI. IVF, and it can be reciprocal IVF, refers to the process where a patient or a patient and their partner go through the process of injecting themselves with medications that cause the ovaries to grow multiple eggs at once um, over a period of a few days up to a few weeks. And then this leads to a procedure called an egg retrieval where a patient or partner are under anesthesia and the eggs are removed from the ovaries. They're then combined with the sperm in a lab by an embryologist um, and embryos are made. Now, the interesting thing about IVF or reciprocal IVF is that one partner can potentially be contributing the egg that's then combined with the donor sperm to make an embryo. And the other partner may be on the receiving end of that embryo. So you can plan an embryo transfer um, into the other partner. So it's a very cool way where each partner feels like they're playing a very big part in the pregnancy. And now a lot of determination about the timing and appropriateness of reciprocal IVF can be made in discussion with providers. You know, this can be based off of things like age, ovarian reserve, timing, costs. There's lots of desires in, in making that decision. It's very multifactorial, but great options for our patients who are with partners where both of them have a uterus and ovaries.